All right. If we could start moving to your places. If I could have everybody's attention, please. I know there's a lot of moving around, but we need to kind of get everybody moving to where they need to be. And if you don't know where you need to be, ask one of the choir members. Well, good morning. It is a little bit different, but I'm sure that that day in Bethlehem, it was kind of a crazy day also. There was a lot of people moving, and a lot, there was a lot of people in town because of all the things that were going on that day, just like they are right here today. And we thank you for taking part. You know, at first when I heard what Connie and the choir were thinking about doing, I said, hmm, okay, that's unusual. But then I got to thinking about, you know what? Jesus came from the perfect place of heaven. He came to Bethlehem that night, and he was born in a manger. Deity come down to make humanness connect. And because of him, he, that night, we were able to have one day have a relationship with Christ, our Father, Heavenly Father. And you know, a lot of times we see the Christmas pageant and we see Christmas programs and the story and we see little kids do it. But you know, this morning, I hope, if nothing else, as you take part, really take part in that story, you'll know and you'll understand what's going on and appreciate what really took place in that first manger. Because without it, we wouldn't even want to be here today. But thank you for being here. I just want to say what a joy it is. It's, it's Christmas time. It, it, here it is. It's December the 17th, and I'm about two weeks behind. I'm still at December the 3rd. But December the 17th, and uh, what a day it's going to be. Our choir is going to present their program this morning, and we're excited about that. And each one of you, Connie, will be on in just a few moments, and we will see that. But before we start, I'm going to have Mike... If you would, Michael, go ahead and show this video. This is a part of Lottie Moon, and I'll share a little bit more. And this is where our Lottie Moon dollars, some of the things that are, it's going to do right now. We are IMB missionaries serving around the globe, both in church planning and in scripture translation for the deaf peoples. Right now, we're in West Africa, where we're working with five different sign languages, five different deaf people groups, to emphasize church planning and scripture translation for these deaf peoples. We wanted to come to you today and say thank you, Southern Baptist, for the efforts to support us in prayer, for the gifts that you give, and for the other ways that you provide support for us every day of the year. And so we are grateful to you for all that you do. Thank you. We've been seeing over the last few weeks things that our monies for Lottie Moon are helping, and this is another way. And next Sunday morning, we'll be taking up our Lottie Moon offering that you'll find some envelopes in the, the pew if you'd like to take one home with you this week and fill out and, and bring it back next Sunday morning. We'll have a offer, uh, an opportunity for you to give to Lottie Moon. And remember, every dollar, every penny that give, is given to Lottie Moon goes straight to the field to help people like these missionaries doing the... Uh, death uh, uh, program there in West a in Africa and then also like we saw in Ukraine uh, last week. Also, uh, next, uh, this afternoon, don't forget, parents and grandparents, if you got children and youth, if you're a part of the children's uh, uh, program tonight, be here at 4 o'clock. You'll have practice. And then tonight, after our children's program, tonight, during our, after our service, We'll have finger food, so if you would bring some finger foods, we're going to have some time of fellowship with our children, and then our children is going to have a special visitor come and see them after uh, we get through having some fellowship tonight. Uh, just to let you know, next Sunday morning, we will have our regular Sunday school and our uh, preaching service. You saw the times in there, and we'll also just, we will not have any Sunday evening service next Sunday night. And then on uh, the following Sunday, the 31st, New Year's, we'll have the morning and evening service. So just make sure you have that. I think that's all the announcements. Randall, is there anything that we need to announce about the youth? Okay. All right. Anybody have anything else before we move on to our prayer time? 
If not, we do want to remember many on our prayer list. You can continue to see the ones that are uh, on our uh, back of our program. If you would, just remember Mr. Cliff Lawless. Mr. Cliff was taken to the hospital yesterday. Let's continue to pray for him. And, and I know there's others. Is there, uh, continue to pray for Mr. Robert. Mr. Robert's at home, not feeling well today. I know he's not, he's not here. And then how about any others that you need to just remember this morning? Well, if not, we will pray, and then after I pray, our offertory, uh, uh, Renee will be playing as our offering will be taken up, so uh, ushers, if you'll get ready and prepare to take up our offering after the prayer. Where's, but, where's Helen sir? Helen oh, Helen Bratcher, thank you, uh, that's right, Miss Helen Bratcher, which is uh, Connie's aunt, and then also uh, uh, Johnny and uh, his neighbor is in the ICU in the hospital, let's remember her. Remember, continue to remember my dad who is at NHC, and uh, I know the others that have been in the hospital are out, but anybody else? Unspoken. unspoken. How about other unspoken? Thank you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this day, and, and Lord, uh, it's a little different than what we normally would do on a Sunday morning, but Father God, that first, or that first Christmas Eve, it was a lot different than what most people expected. Father, they were expecting a king that was coming in on royalty, but Father, you sent one through the stable. Lord, you just pray, you did what was right, and you knew what was per uh, perfect, and Father God, that's what we're seeing, and Lord, what we're kind of doing today. Father, we thank you that everybody is here today, and I pray as they take part, Father, that Lord, it, it, it's a different opportunity, but it's a worship time. Father, it's not, we're not here to put on a, a show or, or um, any kind of production. We're here to worship you today. And as we do, we take part in reliving and walking some steps like things that happened that first Christmas Eve. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this time of year because without him, there'd be no reason. And Father God, we thank you that we have hope because of him, that we can bring prayer requests like we've mentioned here this morning. All these that need a touch from you, we lift them up and pray that, Lord, that you would just be with them and watch over them and take care of each situation. Lord, for the ones that are still grieving and at Christmas time it's hard, would you just be near and dear and give them peace and comfort during this time? And Father God, we just pray now for all our missionaries around the world. Lord, we pray for the ones that we have even seen on the video this morning, Lord, as they minister there in Africa. And, Father, the other missionaries in Uganda and the other 4,000 missionaries that are serving through our International Mission Board, through our Southern Baptist Convention, we pray for them, Father God. And, Lord, we just pray now as we take up this offering that you would use it for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. Lord, that you would use every penny and spread it and put it where it needs to be, Lord, to be used to just spread the word of Jesus Christ to the whole world and in our community. Thank you again for what you're going to do this morning. We commit this time to you. We commit this hour of worship to you. And we just pray that you would be worshipped and you'd be honored and you'd get all the glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Y'all look great. Are y'all excited? Okay. We'll try that again later. Yay. Y'all really do, and I appreciate everybody coming in and just anxious about doing this. This is, this is wonderful. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. One of the more amazing things to me about the Christmas story is that it can, cannot happen without the people God chose for the story. God does not just swoop in and make this story happen all by himself. Instead, for this story to happen, there needed to be willing people in the story. Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the angels, the wise men are obedient and follow through with what they are told to do. And so today, we will have an opportunity to do the same thing. By cho choosing to participate in this story, we will make the story happen. With that in mind, I'm going to tell you a few things. Does everybody have a number? Number. Y'all number five. Red five. Red. Most women are red fives because, you know, they didn't have wise women. <laughs> so, you know, so we are townspeople. But um, so what's going to happen, everybody will be singing the songs. You will see the songs on the screens. Sing loud and proud. Everybody singing. When you see your number on the screen... One. Who's one? Mary and Joseph. When they see their number on the screen, they come to the front. Gotcha? So when you see two is Riley, three of the angels, the angels will come. They have a card that's, that's got their number three on it and silver tape. They go to the silver spots on the podium. Number four. Where are my fours? Where are my shepherds? Hey, shepherds, I got some of these things for y'all. Who else is shepherd? Give those to shepherds. Shepherds, raise your hand. Shepherds, to the... don't hit anybody or yeah. I'm keeping. All right, shepherds. When you see number four, you will come to the four spot with the yellow tape. Five is everybody. Just about everybody. A lot of people are fives. Fives are townspeople. It's going to talk in the story about. They're sure when the shepherds went back, they told everybody what they saw. So they think maybe a lot of the townspeople actually came and worshiped God too. So number five are the townspeople. Number six are the wise guys. I mean wise men. Okay? So wise men, you will have your, you have yellow and you will come to right here or mustard color. Any questions? Red goes and stands on red. Uh-huh. Just find your red spot. Nobody's going to scold you if you stand in the wrong spot. So just, just get up here and try. And at the end, we're going to kind of come in as much as we can, okay, because we're going to sing and sing and sing, and we're going to praise God, and we're going to just rejoice in what this celebration is about, which is the birth of Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you so much, Lord, for the willingness of, of your people to come here and want to celebrate you. I pray that everything will be done in a reverent way that will glorify you in all that we say, all that is sung, all every handshake, every smile will glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. In the Genesis story, we hear that God created the world with language. God said, let there be light. God said, let there be night and day. And God said, it is good. Then in the first chapter of the Gospel of John, we hear how this language, the word, is with God and Jesus. In the first chapter of John, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The true light, which helps everyone to see, was coming into the world. Jesus was in the world, and the word that shaped the world was in him. Yet the world did not know him. He came in what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. 
But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. It is Jesus, a child of God, who by being close to his Father's heart, was, has made God known. Sing with me this little light of mine. In the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, we learn of Mary's will willingness to work with God even though what is being asked of her will not be easy. Being pregnant when not married is against the rules where and when she lives. There are some very hard consequences for breaking the rules, the worst consequences being death. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the messenger of God, Gabriel, was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to an unmarried woman engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The young woman's name was Mary. And Gabriel said to her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. Gabriel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom, will, kingdom there will be no end. Mary asked, How can this be, since I am unmarried? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The child to be born <clears throat> will be holy, and he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the messenger of God departed from her. Sing with me, Emmanuel. <laughs> The place of Jesus' birth is in Bethlehem, a small town a few miles south of Jerusalem. But Bethlehem was not Joseph or Mary's hometown. They had to go to Bethlehem because Caesar Augustus had made a law that everyone must be counted in the towns where their great-great-grandparents or ancestors had been born. This was a long trip to travel by foot, some 60 miles or even three days. It would have been even more difficult since Mary was pregnant. When Mary and Joseph finally made it to Bethlehem, the hotel was already filled with people and there was no place for Mary and Joseph to stay. But there was a stable where the animals rested. That Mary and Joseph is where they were allowed to rest as well.
In this stable with only Joseph to help her, Mary gave birth to a baby boy. She wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger. Mary and Joseph named him Jesus. In this stable, with only Joseph to help her, Mary gave birth to the baby boy. She wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, and Mary and Joseph named him Jesus. Now it was nighttime, and in the fields nearby, shepherds were watching their flocks. Then an angel stood before the shepherd, and the glory of the Lord shone round of all of them. And the shepherds were terrified, but the angel of the Lord said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Immediately after the angel stopped speaking, there were suddenly more angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And then the angels left the shepherds, and the shepherds took a deep breath, maybe four or five deep breaths. Then they looked at each other and said, we better go and see this baby. <coughs>
Now when the shepherds saw Mary, Joseph, and Jesus in the stable and saw that what the angel had said to them was true, they went out and made it known to whomever they met, which means it's very possible that some of the townspeople went to the stable that very night to see and maybe even help Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus because of what the shepherds had told them. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from what time, uh, them what time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for this young child, and when you have found him, bring him back. Bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way.
and moving around, it is possible to forget why we came here in the first place. So I remind us today that we celebrate and remember the birth of Jesus, not just because he was born, but because of the life that Jesus lived. The baby Jesus grew into an adult Jesus and became the Savior of the world. It is exciting that Jesus was born in a manger. But what is even more exciting is that Jesus was born of a mother, just like us. He grew up just like us. And then when he was all grown up, he chose to live God's way and said to us, you can do this too, and here I'll show you how. Just follow me. Over 2,000 years have passed since the Messiah came to earth, and the story is just as life-changing today as it was back when God sent his one and only son that we might have everlasting life, peace that passes all understanding, hope that transcends our circumstances, and joy that is full and complete. So let the hearts of man rejoice. Lift up your heart and voices and celebrate, for Jesus Christ, our Savior, is born. And all God's people said, amen. amen. I wish you could see, and I tell you what, if you get a chance, I hope you can go look on the video and you'll be able to see. But what a great opportunity and what a great just uh, seeing the masses sitting up on the, the stage and the altar there and just taking part. I, I got to ask this question. Is this anybody's first time of ever being in the Christmas story pageant for a program? Look at that. So now you can say you can check that off your bucket list, okay? <laughs> But you know what better way for us to worship together than coming together as a church and just living out and portraying what Jesus did for us when he came from heaven to that lowly manger and then to the cross. Because of those three things, God our Father loved us so much he sent his only son. And if you don't know his son today, I pray before you leave that you'll pull me aside and let me just share with you what it is and what it takes. It's very simple. It's as simple as the story of Jesus' birth that even a babe could know it. It's that simple. And we want you to know that today. I hope this makes your Christmas time just a little bit better. And I hope you will take time during this time not to be so busy. You know, sometimes we get so busy that we just forget about what took place some 2,000 years ago. And what a joy it is. I just want to stand here. We might just, I got. Yeah, I know. It's a good way. It is. But it is very good. So stay is, where you are. Stay where you are. Yes. Y'all stay for, where you are for just a moment. I'm going to close us in prayer. We're going to get out early. Even though Connie made a comment, the, the wise men part that she asked me to put in, the, she, that's the preacher's version. I don't know what she oh, meant by that. Yeah. But she had to say that. But anyway, what a great thing. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, choir members. If you don't understand, a lot of our choir members met down here several nights, and they, uh, we didn't have enough to do. This is 100-plus uh, people in a Christmas pageant at Aceville Baptist Church, and it took costumes, and so they were here. So thank you all for just doing this. and just It's a different thing, but, man, what a great sight it is to see. And, you know, just I, I just want to keep talking, but I'm going to shut up and pray. Let's go. Father, we thank you so much for a beautiful sight. Lord, a, a beautiful story that is told. And it's not a, a make-believe story. It's a real story, Lord, that took place. And Lord, if it wasn't for this story told today of Jesus coming to that lowly stable, coming from his place in heaven, 
that perfect place to a lowly stable, to a crazy world, Lord, we would not have the hope that we have today. Thank you, Father, for that babe. Thank you for this wonderful time of worship this morning and what a worship time it's been. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. And Lord God, we thank you for all that are here this morning, Lord. And I pray because of taking part in this that you would just give them a blessed time. Lord, we just thank you again for all that you're going to do. Be for the ones that are not with us for whatever reason. And we thank you for the ones that are back with us today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I do want to be still for just a minute. I do want to say one other thing. I forgot my mother, my stepmother, where's she at? Where's Patsy? She's right there behind us. Thank her. This is her first time back in about two months. And we're just so proud that she's able to be here. We continue to pray for my dad as he's there and many others that need our prayers. But thank you all. And look at all this. It's just beautiful.